Here's an example of a subset of real numbers uh, that's made up of a union of three different pieces. Um, let me diagram out this set, too, uh, just so that we have something to look at. So the picture here is that everything on this number line that's shaded in red is part of my set, E. And so I want to use this set as my guinea pig to talk about these four different types of points uh, that we're concerned with. Um, let's start with what I believe to be the most important one of them all. Uh, those are the interior points. So starting from the first definition in this list, um, a point is an interior point if there exists a C, a positive number C, such that the open interval x minus C to x plus C is all a subset, is all contained within uh, the set E. So I like to think of this. Interior points are points that have breathing room. Or another way to think about it is that these are points that can stretch out their arms and remain inside the set. So, as an example, um, would we say that 4, so let me pick the number 4, it's an element of my set E for sure, right? Would we say that 4 is an interior point of this set or not? Yes, how come? There's numbers around it, right, right. So what could I choose as a C that would show that this number four, this element of the set E, meets the definition of interior point? Something smaller than one. So let's just pick, I don't know, one half. Right. If I pick one half, then the open interval from four minus one half to four plus one half that open interval remains entirely within the set. Right? And so that makes four an interior point of this set. These are the points that can stretch out their arms, no matter how short we have to make their arms, that there is some amount by which they can stretch out their arms and remain within the set. So um, let's, imagine, let's imagine that we're arguing about the point zero, which is an element of my set. And I chose for my radius of my interval, I chose 1 for my c, so that then I have the interval from minus 1 to 1. And the question is, is that interval a subset of e? Actually, it is a subset of e. Right? Um, because negative 1 is not included in either uh, e or in my open interval. So notice the definition of interior point includes this very specific type of interval, an open interval within it. Right? Um, and so, as you might expect, interior points play very central roles in defining what it means for a set to be open, to be an open set. Right? Um, and that is, in fact, our definition 4.12 here. A set is open if every one of the points of my set is an interior point. Right? If it's not possible for me to find an element of my set that's not interior, right? if all my points are interior points, that I am an open set. So there's a really close relationship uh, between those two pieces of the definition. And so if I'm starting with a set that has these sort of openness properties, like parentheses in the interval notation or open circles in the, the chart on the number line, those play very nicely with this definition of interiorness. So is 5 an interior point? So it's, it's an element of the set, for sure, right? Um, but let's say that I want to stretch my arms out if I'm five, right? So here I am, and I want to reach my arms out and find an open interval. How come I can't do it? Yeah, no matter what value of C that I choose, um, I won't say no matter. Yeah, no, I guess we have to say no matter what value of C I choose, um, the points between five and five plus C on the upper end will at least not all be elements of E, right? So as an example, what can I choose for an example here? C equals, yeah, well, let's not choose two. We could choose two, um, but I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room and choose one. Um, so if I choose C equal to one, then the interval from five minus one to five plus one is not, in fact, a subset of E because that would be the interval from 4 to 6. But all the elements here that are between 5 and 6 are not actually part of the set. 
So five is not an interior point. So this wouldn't be open. So exactly, that's right. So right away, we have found one element of E which is not an interior point. Therefore, E is not an open set. Aha, uh -huh, it is also not a closed set. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's, that's going to be our next step, is to figure out why that's the case. Okay. So let's talk accumulation points. Um, going into the definition for accumulation point, I think this is the one where the notation kind of makes it, well, boundary also makes the notation really kind of challenging. Um, an accumulation point means that any C that I choose, so again, I'm going to... As my point, I'm going to stretch out my arms, um, and C is going to be the length of my arms. Right? I'm going to stretch out my arms, and the claim is that when I stretch out my arms, that I'm going to at least intersect, sorry, accumulation point, that I'm going to intersect my set in infinitely many places. So here I am standing at X. I reach out my arms, which are a length of C, that within my arms' reach are going to be infinitely many points of the set if I'm an accumulation point. So this one does take a little bit more thinking. Um, what might be an example of a point in the set E which is an accumulation point in our example? I'm going to try 5. Okay, So if my x is equal to 5, then the idea is supposed to be that any c that I choose, I can stretch out my arms to x minus c and x plus c. So that's this set here, right? this open interval. So again, we see an open interval as part of our definition here. And the question is, are there infinitely many points of E, infinitely many points of E, inside of this interval? What do you think? Right, yes. So there are, in fact, infinitely many real numbers that are greater than x plus x minus c and less than 5. Right? That's a result that we knew as the density of the real numbers back in unit number one in our semester. Right? Um, there are infinitely many real numbers between x minus c and 5. Why? Because x minus c is less than 5. Right? So there's some room in between x minus c and 5, and the real numbers are dense in themselves. So there's infinitely many real numbers in this little piece of the interval. So in fact, yes, there are infinitely many points of E in this interval. In fact, there's infinitely many of them just over here on the left side of the interval, no matter how small I choose my C to be. Right? Even if I made my C 0. 0.000001, there would still be just enough room on the left side of my little left arm here right? that there would be infinitely many points of my set within my arm's reach. So 5 is an accumulation point for this set. Accumulation point of E. Yeah. The question was, what about 7? Uh, is 7 the only point of E which is not an accumulation point of E? Let's try it. So if I stand here at 7 and I stretch out my arms by a certain amount, will there be infinitely many points of E within this interval? No. In fact, assuming that I choose C to be less than 2, let's say, then how many points of E are there within this interval? One. Just one point, namely 7. Right? So 7 is not an accumulation point. So by the way, um, dit 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 dit, definition 4.10, a set is closed if it contains all its accumulation points. Is 7 a problem for that definition? Does 7 imply that this is not a closed set? Careful. Why not? Because it's not an accumulation point, and therefore this definition doesn't care. Right? This definition only says that if an accumulation point exists for this set, then that accumulation point must belong to the set. And so this definition doesn't say anything about those points which are not accumulation points. So 7 is not the problem. Yeah, let's look at negative 1 and 10 instead and see if that gives us something we can say. So in the definition of accumulation point, we have to have infinitely many points of E within any arm's reach. Right? No matter how short or long my arms are, 
there need to be infinitely many points within my arm's reach, right? infinitely many points of the set. So, yeah, c equals 5 from 7 will give me infinitely many points, but any c's that are less than 2 will not, and since the definition includes the universal claim for all c, um, that means that 7 is not an accumulation. So let's look at 10. As a, well, no, negative 1, because I've got a little bit more room to write. Is negative 1 an accumulation point? Yes. Why is it an accumulation point? All right, if I stand at negative 1 and I reach out my arms, no matter how short my arms are, there's going to be infinitely many points of the set E within that arm's reach. But the problem is, negative 1 isn't an element of the set. Is that a problem? Take a close look at this definition. Yeah, here in the definition, accumulation points do not have to belong to the set. Right? So an accumulation point for a set can be any real number, even if that real number doesn't belong to the set itself. And that's a big difference between accumulation point and all of our other types of points that we're looking at in this portion of the course. Right? Um, of the four types of points we're talking about today, accumulation points are the only kinds that don't have to belong to the set. So negative 1 is an accumulation point. I'm going to abbreviate that. It is an AP. But it doesn't belong to E. Right? It's not an element of E. So now what does that allow us to say about the set E? It's not closed. Right? And that's why this definition here is interesting. Right? A set is closed if all of its accumulation points belong to it. Right? If there's no such thing as an accumulation point which doesn't belong to my set, then my set is called closed. So this set is not closed because there exists an accumulation point. In fact, there exists two accumulation points of this set, which are not actually elements of the set. So here we have an example of a set which is not open because there are some points which are not interior. For example, 5 is not an interior point. But it's also not closed because it doesn't contain all of its accumulation points, because it doesn't contain negative 1. It also doesn't contain 10. So here's an example of a set which is not an open set by our definition. It's also not a closed set by our definition, which should also serve to underscore the common logical fallacy in topology, which is not every set that's not open is closed. And not every set that's not closed is open. Right? Sets can be neither, like this one. Sets can also be both open and closed. But there's a very small universe of sets that can be both open and closed. Um, that's, I'm just going to kind of leave that out there for now.